In this video, we're going to take a look at the five or six form tools that you need to design anything. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, at this point, we have a Forms Mastery series, and it's up to 39 or 40 videos. That is quite a lot of videos, and we've covered these topics over and over and over again. We've done a couple of car modeling series. I think there's three of them. We've done a couple of different examples, but I still get questions very frequently on how do you design this? How do you do this? How do we make this shape? And they often apply to cars, but not always. They, they can apply to pretty much anything. And it made me think that the tools that are in the forms workspace are all very important. They all have their use, and I think I've covered pretty much all of them. But are there ones that are absolutely essential and some that are just nice to have? So with that in mind, I put together this list of five or six forms tools that I think are essential to every design. And then I'm going to toss in a few at the end that are kind of nice to have in no particular order. So let's get started first looking at number one on my list, and that is edit form. I should say that I'm not including the creation of the form body, whether you're starting with a face or a plane or a box. At this point, it doesn't matter. We're talking about manipulating the shape. So number one for me is edit form. This is the main tool that I use over and over again to manipulate the shape. This tool is used to move faces, edges, and vertices. We can change the pivot point. We can rotate, scale, and translate. And we have soft modification. We've seen that we've got tangency control when we're up against a creased edge. And we can also extrude edges. We can take an edge or edges and extrude them. So this tool, without a doubt, is essential. The next tool on my list, number two, is going to be actually a combination of two tools. So it's a little bit of a cheat, but insert edge and insert point. Now insert edge is a tool that allows us to insert an edge or edges at a specified distance from a selected edge. Now this can be either simple or exact, and we've talked about those. Simple allows us to insert the edge exactly where we want it. However, it leaves flat faces in between and we need to manipulate these. Exact will allow us to put the edge roughly where we want it, but it'll maintain the shape. So there are pros and cons to using each of those, but this is an essential tool for us to be able to take a base shape and begin to add tighter transitions and details to the design. Now, the insert point is a very similar tool. However, it allows us to do this not necessarily parallel to our selected edge. We use points to define where we want this new edge to be. Now, this is the main tool that I use to retopologize a form. If I want to clean up edges and make them a little bit more linear, or if I want to take a crease or a blended edge and transition it away, this is the tool that I go to. So I would say that I use both of these equally in most designs, but insert point is definitely a little bit more flexible to give you those transitions and those, those blends that you're looking for. Number three on my list is again, a combination of two tools, but again, they do very similar things. Weld vertices and merge edge. Now, I, I will say that with these two tools, I will always go to weld vertices over merge edge. I say probably 99% of the time I use weld vertices rather than merge edge. But again, they do very similar things, so I do want to include them together. Now, this is a main tool if you are blending two areas of your design together, or if you're taking two completely formed bodies and joining them together, then you're going to need one or both of these tools. I preferred well vertices because it gives me a little bit more freedom to select the very specific vertices that I want to connect together. I found in the past that sometimes merge edge will allow two of the vertices to be just off from each other and it'll mess up the design and you need to do some cleanup and weld the vertices anyways. So again, I typically go toward weld vertices over merge edge, but that's my preference. This brings us to number four on the list, and this one is make uniform. Now, this is a weird tool because it's not always easy to tell what it does. And a recent update in Fusion 360, we no longer have to hop back and forth between box and smooth display mode to see what the tool does. And really the main function or the main design function for this tool is to help remove tension that is formed around star points. So if you have five edges coming together, especially really close to a transition, that tension is gonna cause problems in the surfaces and make uniform helps uniform or, or disperse that tension out in the surrounding faces. 
But I found that this works really well, especially if you're designing in box display mode and you want to keep a consistent distance between all your edges. A lot of times when you go to a smooth display, that's not the case. And using this tool, Make Uniform, will help us take the smooth display and spread those edges out and make them a little bit closer to uniform, like our box display, how we're designing our parts. Number five on the list is Match and Pull. And yes, again, I know I'm cheating here because I'm including two different tools, but these, again, do very similar things depending on what your references are. So the Match tool allows us to take our form's vertices and, and it allows us, well, essentially our form's edges and allows us to attach them to a reference. So for example, if we have the edge of a surface or a solid, we can use this tool and we have an associative option, which means if we change that solid or surface, the form is going to change as well. Now, this is a tool that I use very rarely and oftentimes at the very end of a design because it oftentimes will not perfectly match our reference unless we increase the tolerance value. Now, this means that it's gonna add T points and it's going to affect the way in which we can then manipulate the shape after the fact. So that tool is very handy, but again, I use it at the end of a design whenever I need it. Pull is a little bit different because it allows us to take individual vertices and pull them down to a mesh reference. So if you're creating fender flares or body kits or things like that, and you have a mesh of a car, this is an essential tool because it allows you to match the shape. So again, these tools do very similar things, which is why I lump them together. And it just really depends on what your references are. And number six on the list, and I don't really know if this is a tool or not specifically, but display mode. And I find that this is essential if you're designing with forms. You need to be comfortable designing in box display mode. You need to understand what the requirements are for a smooth design. And you need to understand what the changes of the manipulations are going to do to your smooth display when you're working in box display mode. Now, I have this as number six because you can actually get to it from edit form. It is an option in there, but it is its own tool. So I really think that this is an important aspect and probably I go back and forth between the display modes more than any tool that I use. Now with that list, I think that you can design pretty much anything that you want with the forms tools within the range of what forms tools can do with just those five or six tools. However, there are a handful of tools that do really make the process a bit easier. So I wanna give an honorable mention to four more. Slide Edge helps us move and manipulate edges around. This can help if we're trying to increase or decrease a corner, tighten or, or loosen a transition. Bridge, if we're trying to go between multiple form bodies, we can extrude them with edit form, but sometimes the bridge tool is just easier. Crease is handy if you ever wanna put a hard edge I generally will do this temporarily, for example, inside of the inner fender well on a form on a, on a car body, but it's not necessarily required. You can design in box display mode and you can stick edges relatively close together to get that tighter transition, but crease is a handy tool. And last is flatten. Now flatten, again, is a tool that can be extremely handy, especially if you're up against a creased edge. But for the types of things that I design, I generally don't use that flatten tool. So I did wanna give a mention to those four tools because they are very handy. They just didn't make my top list. If you think I missed something, if there's a tool that you use all the time, please let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.